Hey everyone, my name is Nelson Miller. I'm the owner of PA Creative, and today I'm excited to announce another plugin, and it's a Divi module, and it's the Divi Table of Content Maker. So as the name implies, this module allows you to create a table of contents for use on your Divi blog post. This helps with readability, indexability, and it can even help with SEO. So let's take a look at this module and all of the exciting features that it has. You can hop on over here to the blog post if you're watching on YouTube, click the link in the description. So this plugin is just going to be perfect for anyone who has long content, anyone who has a blog, um, maybe you're an SEO professional or a blogger, or some kind of content marketer, just someone who's making tutorials or anything else where you have more than a couple headings, you know, nowadays you're seeing the table of contents on a lot of popular blogs. And so we noticed that there was no module for this available in Divi. So we created the very first one and we're excited about that. Now I have a list of the features here um, I just kind of, you know, do the little um, graphic, little icon, and the title, and the short description. Feel free to go down over that. I think it would be easier to show you what all this does by showing you um, some screenshots in a live demo, right? So what I've actually done is, over on our demo site, I've added the module and set it up. And what I did is create, like, documentation and then the table of contents is being used for the documentation. So the first thing you might notice is that as I'm scrolling down, the, the current link is being highlighted. And when I click, of course, it's scrolling to that you know heading. You can see that I can collapse this if I want to. Um, there's text and an icon here and just the different levels. You can see that I have a little leading zero before the H1 headings and then I'm doing like a decimal for the H2 headings. And then I'm doing a little icon with an arrow that's pink for the H3 heading. So this is just kind of to show that you can do anything that you want, basically. Remember, it's a maker. So in my maker series, it's just plugins that you can just make all kinds of things, like along with um, the tabs maker and the carousel maker, now the table of contents maker. So I'll just open up the module settings and start taking a look. You can see right away we can customize the header text. We can turn this on or off, whether you want to allow it to expand or collapse, depending on your situation and layout, or maybe even depending on whether it's on mobile or not. You may want to adjust that. You can see that you can choose a default state, icons for you know the icon there, right? You can choose um, you know if you want the different style toggles or whatever you want to do there. Content settings has the included headings. So what headings that are in the content do you want to show up in the table of contents? And I've just selected, you know, um, up to H3. You could do just H1 or you could do um, whatever, all six of them. This next setting is a way to exclude headings. So let's just say, for example, if I had like over here on the sidebar some other text Maybe I had some kind of blurb or heading there. Maybe even this headline up here above. I don't want that to appear in the page. So what I could do, if you look in the help text, I can add this class. So um, we're just adding an, a class to exclude. So what I could do then is, let's say I go up here and I could go to the advanced tab and type in this class and Divi table of contents maker exclude like that and so I'll make sure that any headings that are in this area wherever I put that class would not be included um, in the table right that's the whole idea so next is the hide entire module if setting so it's a conditional logic setting so if if you put this in the theme builder which is the ideal place for it, putting this in a theme builder template the dynamic content will kick in and any headings that you have in your post content will appear in the table. But you may have, you know, so many different types of blog posts. Some of them may be long, some may be short, and maybe you don't want the table of contents to show on the posts that are really short. 
In that case, you can say hide entire module if, you know, there's less than a certain amount of headings. So if there's less than three headings, if there's only one or two, the, the module won't be used. Okay, so it kind of gives you that option less than a number of headings and then it won't be used. Okay, so in this setting we have, you can see H1 to H6, so that's the heading levels. That's what it's referring to. So um, with heading level one, we can choose a marker. So do we want, you know, none? <laughs> I mean, we can literally say none. Um, we could choose an icon and then you can see it's like a bullet point or literally any icon. <laughs> literally um, whole numbers just like that you could choose um, with adding the leading zero you can use the decimals you can do uppercase and you can do lowercase letters and Roman numerals so lots of options um, if you're on the first one you don't have the indent but on the other ones here two through six you have indent so it just gives you that visual hierarchy indenting it like that and then you can choose the indent amount. See that? For each one, right? So in fact, each heading level has a different option for everything. It even has a different option for this next setting, wrap to new line. Do you want to wrap to new line or do you want to add an ellipsis like that? That's just your your choice whether when the you know when the space, when you have a longer heading that is longer than the space you can see this one is wrapping in fact let me see what happens here in the preview yeah there you go you can see that it adds the three dots and cuts it off instead of wrapping to a new line and then in the design tab we have design settings for everything like you can imagine the header area that's this here you can see it's a purple default um, you know the rounded corners borders box shadows all the standard stuff we've added here the header title text that's referring to this here where it says table of contents um, you can kind of see that um, right there and you have all the normal font settings the header icons so you can actually change the colors like naturally if you have a different color for the background you're going to want a different color you know for that so that makes sense you can even change the size of it and you can change the size of the the open icon or the closed one so that's pretty nice over here is the content area now that's this area that's you know below the purple area but here in fact there you can see pretty clearly um, all the design settings for that area and then next would be the actual um, heading text so in the heading text we have an all toggle and then individual for each heading level so you got to look a little closely here so the first one is the text link color. Now, these are all links, so hopefully that's clear that in a table of contents, they're all links. Now, the next one is the link underline color. You saw that when I was um, doing, well, you can see it here too. And then the current text color, so I've made that like this blue kind of link, standard link color, and then the underline also. So again, you can change this for all, if you really want it, you know, you could change individual ones here. So you can change the H1, make it different than the H2. And again, we're talking about um, the heading text. The heading markers can also be adjusted. In fact, I actually changed the heading text size on two, I think, heading level two. Yes, I made that one 15 and I made three 14. I'm um, just showing you that, but in the markers, it's the same thing. So whatever, like if I'm in um, heading one, these are black. Well, what if I want them to be blue or this yellow? You can see that I can change the style of those. So it's really crazy actually how many customization settings we've added here. Everything else is just the standard settings that you have in any Divi module. One thing I should point out is in the advanced tab, the scroll effects, you know, this is probably something you'll want to use. So Divi has the, the scroll effects in all their modules. Here I have chosen to stick to top. And then I even have a, an offset. So you probably want to check that. That's probably one of the features that are kind of outside of the, the regular ones here in the advanced tab, scroll effects. Because, you know, if I am looking at my table here and I click, you know, this heading, 
if I didn't have it sticky, it would have scrolled up out of view. So it depends on how you're using it. You see a lot of blog posts now where they just put it at the top. So it's, you know, it's just kind of like when you get there, it's a way for you to decide, hey, give the user that option. Where do you want to go, right? Right from the start. So it's all up to you. And again, this is the demo, but I also have instructions adding the module to your layout, you know, using the design settings. It just goes down through and you can follow along with that if you um, find that helpful. I hope you enjoy this plugin. I'm really excited for this, especially being the first to market. And, you know, I'm sure somebody will copy me at some point, but I'm excited to be first to market. But also, I really try hard to think through all of the possible settings that you would need. And I really do try hard. But if there's some that I missed, absolutely let me know. Um, there'll always be future updates. If you know me, we are always updating our plugins. And so we like to keep brainstorming, keep improving, and that's what we hope to do. So I really hope you get a lot of use out of this. And we hope you enjoy it. If you do, share it around, let people know about it, and put it to good use. All right, we'll see you all in our next video.